in one or two years, we'll find that you can use them for a lot of um, more like involved tasks than they can do now. So you could um, you could imagine uh, having the models do carry out a whole coding project instead of maybe giving you one suggestion on how to write a function. So uh, you could imagine the model like you giving it sort of high level instructions on what to what to code up, and it'll go and write. Uh, many files and test it, look mm. at the output, iterate on that a bit. So just much more complex tasks. Moving away from sort of one-off queries, uh, like using the model kind of like a search engine, yeah. a smarter search engine, and more towards uh, like having a whole project that um, I'm like doing in collaboration with the model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it knows everything I've done. It's proactively uh, like um, suggesting things for me to try or it's going and doing work in the background. And fundamentally, the unlock is that it can act coherently for long enough to write multiple files of code or what, what, what has changed between now and then? Uh, most of the uh, training data is more like doing single steps at a time. And I would expect us to do more uh, for training the models to ca uh, carry out these longer projects. Um, so I'd say any any kind of training, uh, any like doing RL uh, to learn how to do these tasks, uh, however you do it, whether it's whether you're supervising the final output or supervising it like each step. Um, I think any kind of training uh, at uh, carrying out these long projects is going to make them a lot better. And uh, since uh, the the whole um, area is pretty new, I'd say there's just a lot of low hanging fruit. In, Interesting in doing this kind of training. So I'd say that's one thing. Um, also, I would expect that as the models get better, they're just um, better at recovering uh, from errors or they have um, just, uh, they're better at, um, at dealing, with, um, dealing with edge cases or when things go wrong, they know how to recover from it. So uh, the models will be more sample efficient. So you don't have to collect a ton of data to uh, teach them how to get back on track just a little bit of data or, uh, or just their like generalization from, uh, from other, um, abilities will allow them to get back on the track on track. Whereas current models might just get stuck and get lost. I'm not sure I understood actually how, uh, uh I want to understand more explicitly how the generalization helps you get back on track. Yeah. If you collect a diverse data set, um, you're going to get a little bit of everything in it. And, uh, and if you have models that generalize really well, uh, even if there's just a couple examples of getting back on track, I see. Or okay, even um, like maybe in the pre-training, there's examples of getting back on track. Then, like the model will be able to generalize from uh, those other things it's seen to the current situation. So I think, uh, like, uh, if you have uh, models that are uh, weaker, you might be able to get them to do almost anything with enough data, but you might have to put a lot of effort into um, a particular uh, domain or skill. Whereas for a stronger model, it might just do the right thing without any training data or any effort. Right now, we have models that are on a per token basis pretty smart. Like they might be as smart as humans on a per token basis, uh, the smartest humans. And the, the thing that prevents them from being as useful as they could be is that five minutes from now, they're not going to be so writing your code in a way that's coherent and aligns with the broader goals you have for your project or something. If it's the case that once you start this long horizon RL training regime, it immediately unlocks your ability to be coherent for longer periods of time. Should we be predicting something that is human level as soon as that regime is unlocked? Or, and if not, then what, what is remaining after you can plan for a year and execute projects that take that long. I wouldn't expect everything to be immediately solved by doing any training like this. I would think uh, there will be other um, like miscellaneous deficits that the models have that um, cause them to get stuck or not make progress or make um, worse decisions than humans. So uh, I, I wouldn't say uh, I expect that this one little thing will unlock every, all capabilities, but I um, yeah, it's not clear, uh, but it might, uh, like some improvement in the ability to do long horizon tasks might go quite far. Does that imply that unless there are these other bottlenecks, which they may or may not be by next year, you could have models that are potentially like human level in terms of acting, like, like uh, just, you, you're interacting with this as a colleague and it's like, almost, it's like as good as interacting with a human colleague, you can tell them to go do stuff and they go to get it done, uh, what seems wrong with that picture if this is the capabilities you think might be possible? Yeah, it's hard to say exactly what will be the deficit. I mean, I would say that uh, when you talk to the models today, they have various um, 
uh, weaknesses besides uh, long-term coherence in terms of also like um, like really uh, thinking hard about things or paying attention to what you ask them. Uh, so um, I would say um, I wouldn't expect um, like just improving the uh, coherence a little bit to like um, to be all it takes to get to AGI, but, um, I guess I wouldn't be able to articulate exactly what the main weakness is that'll stop them from, uh, like being a fully functional, uh, colleague.